Hi, uh, in this video I'm going to uh, finish off looking at Griner's model of growth. Um, I started uh, looking at Griner's model of growth, which is here on the specification in the previous video. It's probably worth watching that first uh, if you haven't seen that yet, so you understand the first three stages in Griner's growth model. So just two reminders. Griner's growth model it characterizes uh, an organization's growth over time into a series of stages and uh, each stage has a crisis that leads to the end of that stage and the uh, beginning of a new stage of growth. So we looked at the first three stages of uh, growth in the first video and their crises and we got to the point where we were at the delegation uh, phase where um, we had a relatively inexperienced management team making strategic decisions and relatively experienced, inexperienced middle managers um, having been delegated responsibility for the day-to-day -day running of the business. So therefore, we were facing a coordination crisis where the business um, is kind of just a little bit chaotic and in need of some more control. So what happens? Um, we reach the coordination uh, uh, phase of growth and there's a red tape crisis at the end. So what's the coordination stage of growth? Well, the leaders realise that it's chaotic from the, final, from, from the previous stage. They need to create policies and procedures. Uh, it's, that doesn't make any sense at all, does it? Uh, the leaders need to create policies uh, and procedures. Um, which middle managers are able to then follow and execute. So really clear guidelines for how to operate. Um, it's often going to be associated with an increase in the number of layers in the hierarchy uh, in terms of kind of middle managers who are going to oversee the execution of the strategic direction. I don't know what's going on here. Um, so... It's going to be good for establishing consistency across the organisation. We've got these rules that are being applied. We've got now a nice hierarchy with really clear roles. Uh, if you um, remember layering and delayering, okay, we've got, got quite a few layers in the hierarchy. So maybe narrow spans of control. Managers can keep an eye on what uh, people are doing, and there should be consistency across the organisation. However, when we start to implement these rules and policies and procedures and you've got to go through uh, various stages to get decisions made and you've got to check things with your manager, um, these policies might be demotivating, they might be poorly designed, they might not be well executed and they might be time consuming to carry out. Um, so uh, th this leads to our crisis where we've got too much red tape, too much bureaucracy, it's too difficult and time consuming uh, to make decisions, staff feeling disempowered, uh, the jobs become inflexible and it's time consuming to effectively carry it out because of all of these hoops and stages that you need to go through to make decisions effectively. So um, we're at the stage where we need some more collaboration, we need some more working together, uh, we need to get out of these kind of rigid rules, a bit more flexibility within the organisation to enable us to continue to grow um, and satisfy more customers. So we um, start to collaborate more, which ends up with a growth crisis. So what does collaboration look like? Well, Okay, so lots of these stages are about management decision making and, and it's time now, we, we, we've had these policies and procedures in place, they've come to, become too burdensome and it's time to decentralise some of our, our, our decision making to junior managers who will be able to be creative and come up with their own systems. Um, they've, they've got more freedom to combine more effectively with the other functional areas, we're not just in our little box now, we're trying to um, talk to the other functional areas, you know, see how we can work together. And the organisation may be adapting a matrix structure where, where um, it's kind of informal communication. We're a bit more flexible in order to meet demand. We don't need to jump through so many hoops and, and people are making, uh, are empowered to make decisions. 
it's going to be good for re-establishing kind of some creativity within our our, our, our business, that, that creativity that made us so successful in the first place. It should help to improve the motivation of the, these newly empowered employees. However, we've started to reach the limits of our, our internal growth capabilities. Um, uh, you know, this is, this is now um, a successful organisation, we're a big organisation, but we've, we've kind of reached the limits of what we can do on our own and we have uh, reached a growth crisis. Uh, beg your pardon, that, that, that should read growth crisis. Um, and the growth crisis essentially is that we have, um, we can't grow anymore internally. And so what are we gonna have to do? We're gonna have to move on to stage six, uh, which is about creating alliances. Um, and this will lead to an identity crisis. So um, we're, we're looking outside ourselves now for our future growth opportunities. Maybe it's through mergers and takeovers where we uh, grow through taking over other organisations. Maybe it's a joint venture where two businesses come together and they work together for a particular pro uh, project. Could even be outsourcing where we're outsourcing some of our, um, our uh, production or um, other functions uh, such as like IT or marketing, we're, we're trying to grow through external methods of growth. This is going to lead to kind of complex structures and reporting systems. We're going to have different product lines, different geographical areas, maybe, and um, conglomerate type systems in place. You know, maybe there's a headquarters, um, but there's lots of separate little businesses. Like if you have a look at Unilever. Uh, and their product range have got loads of different products, loads of different reporting lines. Very difficult and complex structure to manage. Um, uh, Virgin are another example where we've got you know lots of different companies operating under the Virgin brand, and uh, we're trying to operate from there. So this is good for taking advantage of growth opportunities, developing synergies with other businesses. Um, taking advantage of, of, of things that are outside our core competence, basically, and getting things done more effectively. However, it, we can maybe lose, comp, uh, lose focus on what was our core competence, and we're going to have difficulty identifying the business's corporate culture. What is it that makes our business unique? You know, we, we, we're now in all of these different markets, perhaps, um, different geographical areas, maybe we've got a couple of joint ventures going on. So we've got lots of different um, corporate cultures and we're going to potentially suffer from an identity crisis where we're too big and complex. It's difficult to identify our core purpose. What's the meaning of our business? And um, that can lead to a lack of direction and it can lead to demotivated staff. So, um, that's Griner's model of growth. Over time, we go through different stages. Each stage is brought to an end by a different crisis. And um, uh, this was based on uh, research that uh, it was called Larry Griner uh, did. He was an academic in the US. So what are the criticisms of this model? Well, I'm sure you can think of a few yourself. Why don't you just try and think of some? So uh, first of all, of course, this is a very simplistic representation of a complex and yawned process business growth. It's going to be unique to each business. Uh, and we're trying to apply this one size fits all to every single business. Obviously, in reality, um, that may not hold true. The duration of each phase and the whole model is going to differ from business to business. Um, some businesses might miss stages entirely, experience the crises in a different order, or some businesses maybe experience more than one crisis at the same time. So it's possible that um, you know the, the, the you know the business is simultaneously trying to empower junior managers, um, uh, but uh, we've also got an identity crisis going on where we've uh, grown too quickly. So um, this is kind of a one size fits all model. Um, obviously that can be criticised, but does that mean that um, the model is, uh, is useless? Well, no. What it tells us is that growth is likely to be uh, challenging. Um, growth will require an organisation to be flexible and um, 
you know, will need to uh, develop and change its operating procedures uh, as it, uh, uh, over time. And if these crises, if a business is aware of these potential crises, they can be on the lookout for kind of signs that this is happening, and they can take um, proactive approaches to move on to the next stage before the crisis becomes too uh, severe. So it is a useful model, despite uh, these criticisms that people may have.